raised in a home of a single mother with 10 children. I'm the youngest. In my kind of house, growing up, they protect you from people to harm you. They give you shelter, they give you food, but they don't say, I love you, how are you? They don't hug you, they don't kiss you. They don't give you no affection. I'm raised with a lot of boys, so my brothers, they're selling weed. My brothers, they're selling weed. They're womanizer. They have different girls in one day. I see all of this. In my mind, the way my brother treat girls, I'm not giving no guy the opportunity to treat me like that. So anybody you date is like, if it's not my way, there's no way. I'm not giving them the opportunity to have authority over me. I also had a grudge against my mom, not knowing that I, it was a grudge because I, I think she preferred the boys over the girls. Being raised in a home like that, you see your mom doing everything on her own. It's like you get the feminist mindset. Like I don't need a man. So at the age of 15, I started to work. And then it came to the point where you become rebellious. I'm paying my own bills. Now I'm 18, my mom cannot tell me what to do. If I wanna go to the club, I can't go to the club. I didn't have a male figure in my life like a father. I'm assuming everything besides God that is missing. I remember I went like 24 hours without showering. Um, I quit my job. Three, two o'clock in the morning, I will go out. If you ask me where I'm going, I don't even know where I'm going myself. I just know that I don't want to be inside of the house. So I started to become the nightlife, like clubbing. I was very aggressive. I will fight in the split of a second. I didn't care how big you were, if you were a guy, you were a girl, you were older. I was just ready to fight, win, lose, or draw. That was like my hobby. I was never afraid. I wasn't even afraid to walk the street. And I'm a girl, I'm young. So I started dating a guy. And of course, I have a child. I remember watching this program, but after I, I present, I felt like lighter. Because I explained, I didn't hold back anything. I put everything in the email. One day, I just got up once, one Wednesday, I just got up and said, I'm gonna come, I took the address down, I'm gonna come on my own. Same day I was coming, he was calling me. And I was already inside of the church. And then I started taking my life seriously, like, no, I have to come here, I have to start fighting for my life, I have to stop this. I told myself, like, that following Friday, no more clubbing. And that same Friday, a friend of mine got shot in the club. Then I said, no, it's a sign. I need to take my life seriously. And ever since that, I started making the chain of prayers. I started to feel lighter. And I mean, in this ministry, everything is straightforward to the point it hurts, but inside of you, you know it's the truth. So regardless, it's not easy. It's not an overnight um, thing, but I know I was in the right place. I came, decided I'm, I was going to receive the Holy Spirit. I did everything. I, I, I prepared myself spiritually, physically. Um, and I, I, I cried like, I'm not leaving here until. And I received the Holy Spirit that night. I felt like I just wanted to walk to Nostrand and tell everybody about Jesus. My family, we're together, we're blessed. Um, my siblings, we're together. I'm the breadwinner of my family. I mean, coming from a family where we couldn't make ends meet, we used to fight each other to pay the bills. I mean, God has blessed my financial life as well. I myself can pay everything. I even told my mom, you know, you, you can retire. I'm very happy. I'm at peace. Um, I wouldn't trade it for anything else in the world. Now, now I know I have something, I, I have a, like a purpose. I sleep like a baby. Um, I'm not angry, of course. And everybody that I wanted to fight, actually, I actually, I didn't just say I wanted to forgive them. I reached out to them. I call them. I pray for them. And we have a good relationship. You feel like nothing could stop you now. All workers are people who are on the ground. On call or sometimes have to put their lives at risk. From the start of the day until late at night. Trying to solve problems to put others' mind at ease. In unpredictable situations. Whatever they are, to try to make the economy go forward. This is why we bring to you the Workers Pro.
Arise and shine. Be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Together we are strong. We are here this Saturday in order to determine that when you set your foot out of your house, you are going to set your foot in order to receive a victory. You are going to set your foot out of your house in order to receive an answer. You are going to set your foot out of your house in order to receive a blessing. Because everything depends on how we react. We hear bad news, we see negative things, we are surrounded by so much. But the way we react to it will determine what is going to happen next in our lives. You have to see every obstacle you come across in life as an opportunity for you to achieve that which you want to achieve. The stones that are thrown on you, get it and make it bricks and build on it because God will enable you to reach where you never thought you'd be able to reach. Because, my friend, you are meant for greatness. Speaking about you being meant for greatness, let us now see what is God's promise for this Saturday. The promise of the day. Promise of the day. There shall be no evil before you, neither shall any play coming near your tent. Psalm 91 verse 10. No plague will come near your tent and no evil will befall you. This is God's promise for you this Saturday. No matter what evil may be trying to do to cause you pain, to harm you, it will not come near you. It will not cause you pain, it will not cause you harm. Why? Because God promised. God promised that evil will not be for you. No plague come near your tent. So when you set your foot out of your house today, no evil will be for you. No plague will come near you. You are going to conquer. That was the case of Gideon. Because when Gideon set his foot out of the cave, and he went to the wine press to trash wheat in it, there he was exposed. But no evil came upon him. No plague came near him. And he in this place, the fountain of Gideon, Gideon's spring, is a place of separation. It's the place that God say, this one is mine, and you cannot touch him. This one is mine, and you cannot come near him. When you hear the voice of God, and you put God first, God, he claims ownership over your life. He says, she's mine. He's mine. No plague can come near her. No evil can come near him. And so in this place, God is going to show the difference. God is going to make you see that indeed He is with you. And this promise which we have read will come to pass in your life. Believe it because what God is about to do in your life is something tremendous. Put Him first. Return to Him. Honor Him because He will honor you. It's now our moment of prayer. This is our moment of prayer. I have my bottle of water with me, and I believe you have your bottle, your glass of water with you. It's now time for us to talk to God. It's now the moment of prayer. My God and Father, today is Saturday, and there are people that they are preparing themselves in order to go to their business, to their working place, to their office. Others, they have meetings. Others, my Father, they have appointments. I don't know what exactly your people will be doing this Saturday, but I ask of you that your light may shine upon each one of them. And no evil must befall them, no plague must come near them, but it has to happen when they set their feet out of their home. It must be for their blessing, for their victory. Frustrate all the plans of evil. No weapon formed against them must prosper. On the contrary, they are going to see your deliverance, your power. So my God, I bless this water and I determine that all those who drink of it, they will drink of your blessings and they will see, my God, that you are with them. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and those who agree and believe say, Amen. You may now drink from this blessed water. You are blessed indeed. God is with you. Today is Saturday. 
We are going to prepare ourselves for tomorrow. Tomorrow Sunday, all the universal churches of the kingdom of God will be open. We are going to be having services from hour to hour. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, midday. You have six options to choose one. Remember that you are requested to wear your mask when coming to church. Your hands will be sanitized at the entrance of the church. And we are holding services with four people plus the pastor. So bear with us. If you arrive in church and the pastor is conducting the service, you are going to be requested to be outside and keeping the social distance six feet from the person in front of you. And most assuredly, when joining us tomorrow, you are going to hear the word of God that's going to empower you and uplift you. Remember, we are supporting the decisions, the decision, the regulations that were passed by our government, our leaders here in Trinidad and Tobago. We are fighting this battle together to eradicate this virus from our land. So join us in this purpose of faith tomorrow to seek the Holy Spirit, but comply with the rules and regulations. Let us see what Gideon's Spring is all about, because this place is for your life to change, followed by the work of the Universal Church together with the Unisocial. Arise and shine. Be blessed. Together, we are strong. said to Gideon, the people, the people are, are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them for you there. So he brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the three hundred men who lap, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. This place was where thirty-one thousand seven hundred were proven to be weak and complacent with their situation, and only three hundred people passed God's test. And through them, an entire nation was saved. God wants to show His power in your life. But for this to happen, you must test your faith in God and prove that you are capable of receiving His blessing. And this test is your faithfulness in your tithes. When you return your tithes, you are proving to God that you are ready to receive His greatness in your life. June will be the month of test. A picture of your ear will be taken to Gideon Spring, where the 300 were chosen because of their attitude and courage. And just how you heard and obeyed God's voice, God will also hear and answer you. Become like the 300 and make yourself chosen by returning your tithe in this month of June. Due to the tremendous success of our Unisocial Week in Trinidad and Tobago, giving back to the communities, and by touching the lives of many, the Universal Church to continue with reaching the hundreds of homes who have been stricken with this nightmare of COVID-19, we come to you by asking your donations of these non-perishable items. Water, canned foods, cleaning products, and any other help will be greatly welcomed.
You can drop off these items to any of our branches nationwide. If you have these non-perishable items, cases of water, and clean products in large quantities to donate, you can arrange to pick up with one of our drivers by calling any one of these numbers 389-9880 or 709-8062.